So I did a video previously introducing dialogue flow and how to use it to create a basic chatbot on Telegram. And we only scratched the surface of the potential of dialogue flow, the tip of the iceberg, if you will. Today, we shall get into the advanced stuff and explore fulfillment and webhook. Understanding what these do will be akin to having an oxygen tank to dive under the ocean and explore the rest of the iceberg. Bet it's the first time you're hearing this analogy. So what is fulfillment and webhook? Well, these allow us to work with our own code, which will contain a variety of functions to improve our chatbot. But you may have realized that Dialogflow does not have a built-in IDE. Therefore, we have to import our code from our computer. To do this, we need to enable fulfillment in Dialogflow to let it know that we are going to read in an external code script and to use it. And this begs the question, how are we going to let our code reach Dialogflow? The code script is on our computer, while Dialogflow is hosted on Google servers, and these are obviously two completely separate environments. That's where Webhook comes in. We will upload our code online onto the server, and Webhook tells Dialogflow where to find the code on said server. So to demonstrate the above, we'll be looking at the case study, and I'll be using one that I've done before, the traveling salesman problem. I have a video on this, but it is 30 minutes long, so I'll give a summary of it. We shall imagine ourselves as a startup food catering business. We have an intelligent system that reads in a set of destinations and gives us a route that is optimized to be either of the shortest distance or shortest time duration required to make it from our kitchen to every destination and back to our kitchen. And to make the system even more convenient, we shall create a Telegram chatbot. Our chatbot will allow the user to type in all the addresses of the destinations, and once done, it will output the optimized route. So let's start by creating an intent to do exactly just that. For the training phrases, throw in a bunch of made up addresses. Um, you don't have to give a proper address because there are too many variations of it in the whole wide world. Our purpose is to instead train the system to simply recognize and pick out the whole input string. This has an assumption though. The user will only type in the address of the destination and nothing else. That means the user should not type in something like, my address is such and such. We just want the address. Now, notice the entire phrase is highlighted because we want Dialogflow to recognize that the whole string will be the address. In fact, these are being assigned an entity. There are system entities that are related to locations, but we want to make it as generalized as possible, so we'll use the at sys any entity. This entity is most useful for making general references. We shall also name them as the address parameter and name the action as get address. For our response, we will not fill it up in the dialog flow console. Instead, it will be created from our code. A response from a given code will supersede that which is written in the console text box. Also, remember that our code is meant to be on a server. Assuming Dialogflow is unable to access the server or the code for some reason, then Dialogflow will fall back to the response that is given in the text box here. Therefore, the response I have written in the text box is server offline. Hence, if I see this response in the chatbot, I will know that the code has not been executed. Next, we'll look at our code. We will use Python for it, and in order to execute it in our chatbot, we need to use a special Python library. This is because we are writing code that will go up into a server, and this requires a special format. To achieve that, we will use Python Flask. Python Flask is a specialized API library that can be used for web development. If you've never used Python Flask before, don't worry. I would recommend you reading this quick start guide. In fact, you can read everything that goes maybe the first couple of paragraphs and yeah, you can probably just stop right about here. So going back to the code, what you see on the screen right now is a basic skeleton of the Python Flask code that we will use for our chatbot. This skeleton code can not only be used for the tutorial today, but for any chatbot that you make. So the code is quite simple. We start from the top where we import the Flask then we initialize the Flask app. In line 8, we are creating the route for the webhook and you can choose to rename this to anything that you want, but the backslash should remain. You'll see how this part fits in towards the end, but for now, let's leave the name as it is. In line 10, we come across a request. A request is what a user types into the chatbot to expect a response. In fact, if we go back to Dialogflow and if we type to the chatbot, for example, ABC Mart. 
You can open up diagnostic info at the bottom. You can see how the user request looks like in JSON format. Now back into the code, in line 11, we initialize the fulfillment text. A fulfillment text is exactly the same as a response in the dialog flow console. Next, in line 12, we retrieve the query result. The query result is found from line 3 onwards in the diagnostic info. It tells us everything we need to know about what the user has typed. For example, the text that was typed is ABC Mart. The action called is get address and the parameter reference is address. So going back to the code again, in line 13, we are looking to see if the action key matches get addressed. We can also match other keys such as the query text or the parameters based on your needs. Of course, we can also have as many if else statements as we want in order to match all our dialog flow intents. Once match, we can define a set of executable code inside the if else statements and create different fulfillment tags. And finally, in line 20, we will return the fulfillment text to the dialog flow for it to print out the response. And going back to our dialog flow, we also want to ensure that this option under fulfillment enable webhook call for this intent is enabled. We want to ensure this is enabled for any intent that is involved with the code. Next, we want to transfer our code onto a server. To do that, we need a service that provides a server. Now, there are many of such services, and while most of them are paid, more often than not, they also provide a free tier that we can use. Today, we will be using Heroku. Now, I'm not sponsored by Heroku or anything, but it is something that I know of and that I use. So, before we get to that, we should also discuss running our code on a local host. What this means is that the code will be hosted on your own local network and most often can be done free of charge. But hey, you might ask, why use a paid service when I can use a local host? Well, there are important distinctions to the both of them. First, if you want to run local host continuously, you have to leave your computer on continuously as well. That means if you turn your computer off, your local host will terminate and your chatbot will not be able to access the code. This is fine if you are doing a mini school project or some sorts, but obviously if you want to scale that up and have a proper chatbot that works 24-7, then this isn't the best solution. Then, the reverse argument can also be made. Like, I should always use the paid service, or the free tier of it at the very least. Why do I need to know about localhost? Well, it is still useful for you to use a localhost in order to develop and test your code. We always test our code on a development environment and not on the production level. If you are using a paid service to test your code, and mind you, testing often involves many trials of running and changing your code, you will incur the charges that comes with the paid service. Even if you are using the free tier, more often than not, these free tiers come with a limited number of access. We don't want to use it all up just by doing testing. So, in order to get started with localhost, we shall make use of ngrock. This is a tool that offers free running of localhost. ngrock also has its own paid service, albeit not with a free tier. Hence, we shall only use ngrock for our testing environment on the localhost. Additionally, we will use Heroku for our free tier servers for the production environment. So, what we want to do is sign up for an account and download ngrock. Once done, we can open up the ngrock application. So, to get started, issue the command ngrock http 5000 and hit enter. What's happening here is that ngrock has created a tunnel that forwards all requests going into the temporary unique forwarding URL and into our localhost port 5000. So we're going to copy the forwarding URL and note that we want the second one listed as Dialogflow only accepts HTTPS and not HTTP. After you copied it, go back to Dialogflow, go to Fulfillment, enable Webhook and paste in the URL that you have just copied. At the end, you want to append backslash webhook. This backslash webhook at the end of the URL will look familiar and it should because it was defined as the webhook route in our code. So once you're done here, remember to click save. And now whenever a user types into the chatbot, Dialogflow will send a request to the URL here and ngrock will forward it back to our local host. And with that, we have just linked Dialogflow to our local host. Now, we shall also link our code to the local host so that Dialogflow and the code can communicate with each other. 
Flask has got us covered for that. So referring to the Flask documentation again, we note that we have to name our Flask app and then we can execute Flask. Once you execute it, notice that it will run on port 5000 and that is the same port as our dialog flow. Now let's assume that we have completed testing of our code and we want to deploy it to production. This time we'll need the Heroku service. Sign up for a Heroku account here and once you're in, you're going to want to create a new app. Give your app a name and you can choose a region that you want. I'm just going to leave it as United States and then click on create app. Then go into settings and scroll down till you see your domain name right here. Copy it and then go back to your dialog flow. Now you're going to replace this with the Heroku URL. We're also going to leave in the backslash webhook portion. And of course, remember to click save. So with that, we have just linked Dialogflow with Heroku. Now we also have to transfer our code onto Heroku. This requires you to be familiar with Git because we will use Git to upload our code onto the Heroku server. So first of all, Let's ensure that our code is inside its own individual folder. We then have to add in a couple of new files to the folder. The first file is requirements.txt. Inside requirements.txt, we will add in the names of the libraries to be installed as well as their versions. This is because Heroku app is a completely new environment. So just like we had to install libraries to be used locally on our own computer, we have to let Heroku know what other libraries it needs to install. We also need to install Gunicon. Gunicon is a library that tells Heroku to start a web server for our Flask application to run. To enable Gunicon, we do not call it via a Python script. Instead, we want to create the second new file, proc file. So to create the proc file, we will first start by creating a text file. So open it up and insert this line into it. Now name of Flask will be replaced with the name of your Flask application. So once you've done that, save the file and rename it to proc file. You also want to delete the .txt extension at the back. So yes, this file will not have any extension. Now we shall upload all of these files onto Heroku. So we're going to use a git right now. Open up a new terminal and change to the directory where all your files are located. Now to enable git to be used here, we first need to initialize it. So type in git init. What you see will be a little bit different from mine because I had already initialized this folder before, but it's okay. And then next, we will git add all the files into the staging environment. So type in a git add with the period symbol. So the period symbol at the end indicates that we are going to include all the files in the folder. Following which we will want to commit all the files. So type in git commit dash m and then type in the comment that you want. So for me, I have nothing to commit because my branch is already up to date. But what you see is that you have three new files added. Then we now need to log in into our Heroku app. So type into your terminal, Heroku login. This will open up a browser to allow you to log into your Heroku account. So just follow the instructions on the screen. Then once you're logged in, you want to link your Heroku repository with your local one. So type in Heroku git remote dash a and the name of your application. So in my case, my application name was Bigfoot YouTube. And for the last step, we want to push our code onto Heroku. So type in git push Heroku main. And once you see all of these, congratulations, you have successfully deployed Heroku for production. Your chatbot should work 24 seven with your code. So there we have it. We have covered the necessary steps required in order to enable fulfillment and webhook with Dialogflow. And this will now allow you to code exciting features for your chatbot. The steps involved here are the backbone for any chatbot projects you embark on. And the Python Flask skeleton code is also reusable for most chatbot projects. So go ahead and explore more so that you can create your own amazing chatbot. And with that, thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you in the next one.